Yes, lads, welcome back to episode 42 of the Fulham Career Mode. We start off the episode with a big offer from Hatabo from Everton. I joke it was two and a half million pounds and a swap deal for someone like Tom Davies, who get, who cares? So we have a quick look at a monthly scouting update. So we normally don't do these very often and um, we don't really get anyone. Like we, we had Mello from the first youth intake, but that's really it. We haven't really had anyone since, but I'm, I'm, I prefer real player faces anyway, so it's not really much of a big deal, but there's still really not much for me to... I, I just want to try and change up a little bit, see if I can get anyone decent to put on loan. No, I don't know if we we'll do any more than one more season on this, so um, we'll see what happens. But we see the scouting update, and it's just, it's just crap. There's nothing, absolutely nothing. I think this is the second one, or the, I think that's probably the second um, update we've had so far, because I did the scouts ages ago, and just nothing happens. But we have it aboard uh, critical priority. That's a critical priority. I could have got sacked because of that. They're the problem with career mode, a low domestic success. So if we don't get top four, they're not bothered. Well, you know, it is what it is. But we do start with the first game of the episode. We have got Burnley. In a, we'll start as a simulation and then I'll I'll play it second half because I know I know it's an FA Cup fourth round game against the Premier League side, but look at their team. It's crap. They've got Tetachito, whatever his name is. It's not to say, you might, you're not meant to say his regular name, are you? But, I mean, like, look at this until half time. Nothing happens. We can't even break through. Look at that wall. It's just a claret wall from Burnley. It's really, really boring. <laughs> really, really boring. But that was half time, apparently. They had two shots, no chances. We had one shot, one chance. We used the second team, so I thought, you know, I'll, I'll just play it. It'll probably be easier. We're more likely to get a win with the um, or me playing, to be honest, because the AI sometimes is shocking. So uh, not long after the kickoff, Krizanich picks up the ball off Robinson. He's looking for the overlap. But Krizanic takes a little ball roll past Nat Phillips. And look at that for a goal from the young Serbian winger. Honestly, like I don't really play him that much at the moment, but he's a very good player. I signed him as a 20-year-old 78 rated or something like that, which honestly is really difficult to get in career mode. You don't normally get him. I know we're in the fourth or fifth season, probably. I think it's the fourth season. I mean, that, that's a nice little bit of skill. It's a good goal from Krizanic to pull one up. So um, not long after... Um, as your K picks up the ball, plays it into Radonic. It's a very, very good save by Aaron Ramsdale, who's now a cup goalkeeper after releasing Ripuccio. I probably shouldn't have done it. But, you know, here we are. I did do it. So, <laughs> yeah, not not a great idea. But um, we do go again. Five minutes before the end of the game, Mello running through the midfield. Carrillo plays the ball out wide to Krizanic again. He was looking back for a man to play the ball to. Nice pass to Ricky J. Jones, who turns to Anzabi and fires under Bailey Peacock Farrell to get the win. That's a really good finish, that. But uh, Ricky J. Jones hasn't really had much game time since the start of the season. When he sort of came alive, but we signed Carrillo then, and Carrillo's sort of taken over his spot, as Carrillo is arguably better, I'd say. I'd say they're probably similar pace, but Carrillo's a better, better footballer. But it's a good turn by Ricky J. Jones. It's a good finish. And Bailey Peacock Farrell is nowhere near it. And right before the end of the game, Burnley plays some really nice football. Tanganga loses the challenge to Connor Roberts, who wastes the opportunity really poorly. And Ramsdale easily gathers into his chest. So, um, comfortable 2 0 victory, to be honest. I know I only played second half, but I didn't really fancy playing a full game against, against these in Cup again after last time. 3 0 down to 3 3 was just a bit depressing, to be honest. Uh, just a moment of your time. So, we do have a press conference. By the way, we've only got four games in today's episode, so. Um, we do start with a cup game. We've got two league games and a Champions League game. So, um, press conference. Oh, they, keep, they keep saying Tichichito, like he had a good game, but he didn't do anything. So he's one of the best Thank midfield players time, around. Really he's not. He's that. banged. That's, That's why he plays for Burnley. So uh, yeah, we, we do. We, we do win the game, and um, of course we go into the next game. And you see Mitrovic taking free uh, free kicks before the game. Thirty four goals. The joint Premier League goal record for a 42-game season. The record for a 38-game season. And we are, of course, at the Cottage. And we have a massive, massive opponent. And we, of course, are facing the Toffees Everton. So, um, obviously, I forgot then. That's why I took so long. We'll see the team. We've got Ramsdale in goal. But Lamptey, Tamori, Ramos and Gavard as the back four. But Bellingham and uh, Zambangish as the midfielders. With Demir and Mellor as the right and left attacking midfielders. And then De Groot and Mitrovic lead the line. I don't know what happens, but why does it say it's 4 1 2 1 2 and it's clearly not? It's a 4 2 2 2. I have no idea, but not long into the game, De Groot picks up the ball. 
great pass to Mitrovic and it's just very unfortunately blocked. Wide of the post. We do get a corner though. Melo is looking for Mitrovic again. Out jumps his man and it's really fortunate cut off the line for Everton's sake. Pickford went nowhere near it. He sort of dived down the wrong way and got really lucky. And um, we're also trying to get the, the shot back in, but we're not, we're not, we're not going to get anything out of it. I'm not going to lie to you. As Everton do get a touch there and the attack does end. So, um, I mean, he turned that quickly. I couldn't even commentate on it. And look at the celebration. Fantastic goal from Mitrovic. By the way, I should say, sorry, I've got a cold, so I don't really sound... Well, I come up too much at the moment, but it was a great goal by Mitrovic. I sound really raspy, don't I? I can hear it in my own voice. It's horrible. But, um, yeah, great ball by Zambo and Gisi. It's a really good finish by Mitrovic to put us 1-0 up against the Toffees. So, 35 goals. He has broken the record, apparently. And, um, I mean, I can't really be enthusiastic when my voice sounds like this, but we are indeed 1-0 up. Then De Groot plays a nice through ball to Mitrovic. It's a really poor pass by Michael Keane and Mitrovic gets there. What is Pickford and Michael Keane doing? Keane is shouting at Pickford, but oh my days. That is awful. Absolutely awful. He shushes the camera because we do hate Everton. We hate Everton on the channel. I understand why people like him, I guess, but no, not at all. Not, not with players like that. So, um, 35 minutes now. Mitrovic picks up the ball, plays it into De Groot, who's looking for the overlap of Melo. It's a great ball from Mitrovic again. Such an easy goal. This Everton team is so poor defensively. They're making so many clangers and just leaving everything open. And Mitrovic again with a baby celebration. He must be having a baby. It's not. I'm not working in a story, by the way. I don't. I don't really do stuff like that. But it's a good bit of football, nonetheless. And Melo with a good ball through to Mitrovic, who uh, slots it past the goalkeeper. And uh, we are obviously three 0 up, so it's really good, really good start to the game at Cottage. But I'm not going to break anything up because more stuff happens. I don't want to spoil it, but more stuff happens. As um, Everton are trying to play the ball around the back. They have got Castagna from Ever uh, from Leicester, which I didn't realise. They just play stupid balls like that. But then people like Bellingham close them down and put them under pressure. So Bellingham's running with the ball. I tried to play it to De Groot, then he gets the ball back and Mitrovic makes it four with another emphatic finish. 4-0 already. The first half, four goals from Mitrovic. It's not even like I'm passing to him on purpose, so he just scores. And not long after that, I didn't want to just do consecutive breaks, but Haller does turn his man and he just scores. It's a really good finish. Is he, Demori just can't get near him. It's a, it's a good goal from the big Ivorian. And, um, of course, Everton make it 4-1. So it's a good turn. I, I mean, they've done well to sign him, to be fair, because I can imagine a lot of teams are after him in real life after his season with Ajax. Obviously, the superior striker is Mitrovic, and we are indeed 4-1 up. So um, not long after the restart, about two minutes, to be fair, De Groot picks up the ball. Looking for the through ball of Mitrovic, who just runs through past Michael Keane and dinks Pickford so, so well. The composure from Mitrovic is phenomenal, by the way, sometimes. And he might go, oh, yeah, it's you, Tom. Stop being boring. But, I mean, it's the player at the end of the day, and it was a really good goal. And not long after that, it's another through ball for Mitrovic. Runs across his man, front post. It's off the crossbar for his double hat trick. Very, very unfortunate for Mitrovic. Um, and then not long after, 10 minutes before the end of the game, Mitrovic gets unfortunately tackled by his man. But Everton have a bit of a defensive mix-up. Falls out to Saka, who picks up the ball. He's looking for a man. Great back heel pass to Bellingham, to De Groot. Mitrovic to Mella. Easy chance, easy goal. What a finish that was across the goalkeeper, posting in. And we are 6-1 up. I mean, this is a really good result against a very, very decent Everton side. You can't get near us. They really can't get near us. Look how many men they've got back and they just can't defend us. And uh, we do win the game 6-1. What a result that is. 6-1 against Everton is a fantastic result. And I'm really, really impressed with how the team's played. But um, the match ratings as well. Mitrovic had 13 shots out of our 16. You can say I just passed the ball to him, which I may have done. But he was still fantastic as well as the rest of the... Um, throughout, throughout the front four, Saka was a bit average. And so was Demir, to be fair. But we see the expected goals. We deserved the game massively. Absolutely massively. And we did win 6-1, so... Shove that up here. Whatever's Everton. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not happy when I play Everton, because oh, they always, a always a difficult team to play. But 6-1 against the Toffees is a really good result. They are, of course, in the top 10. So it's always difficult to beat a team in the top 10. But we managed to do it. 
And um, Mitrovic, a press conference about Mitrovic. Name something new. Is water wet? Yes, it is. And Mitrovic has got another press conference. He's got another match ball and another match. match. So, um, Thanks so much for your time. Really good result. And they're just, they're just boring press conferences, aren't they? They're really just... They're just you don't want to watch them half at time because they're just so uninteresting. And yeah, I have to read them now because I, I realise it works better. Do go straight to the third game, though. We have got Chelsea at the Cottage again, another home game. We have Ramsdale in goal for this one. We have uh, Hatabo coming in for Lamptey, and then Tamori, Ramos and Gavardial as the back four. We have Bellingham and uh, Zambangish as the midfielders, with Saka on the right, Meller on the left, and De Groot and Mitrovic as the strikers. So, yes, this is the strongest team by an absolute country mile. Obviously, Hataboa and Lamptey are a bit interchangeable, but still a very strong team. But then straight from kickoff, Mitrovic rolls his man, gets a lucky ricochet back to Saka, and Mitrovic, first-time shot. Past Edward Mendy, and what a finish that is. 1-0 up already against a very, very strong Chelsea side. I, I didn't show their team. It's not the featured game. The featured game is the last team we've got. It's a good little ball back by Saka. It's a really, really composed finish by Mitrovic. To put us 1-0 up, 40 goals in 26 matches in the Premier League is absolutely ridiculous. And Chelsea do indeed get us back underway. And um, they do get the next highlight, though, 16 minutes in. Pulisic running against Tamori, and that is a red card challenge. He knees him in the face, and it's nothing. So I'll take it. I'm not going to complain. I will take that challenge. But Lukaku gets a free kick 40 yards out, and it's an easy save by Ramsdale. But he did strike it with some power. Still a good save by Ramsdale. And um, we do get to have a quick break ourselves this time with Mella running through against Aspilicueta, looking to pull the ball back, but goes for the shot. It's a good save by Mendy. And Kante sort of ambles it, but he's five foot six and he smiles a lot, so he can't do anything about it. But um, 30 minutes now, the group gets past his man really well, plays the ball off to Saka. I wanted it to go to Hatabo. It's a great ball to Saka. I thought it was offside, but obviously wasn't. And um, I mean, really good finish by Saka, to be honest. He got through his man. He broke the offside trap and it was a really, really composed finish past Mendy. He was obviously one of the best goalkeepers in the world and on the game. So... Um, Good play by De Groot, a fantastic incisive through ball. That's why he's the top assister. And we are indeed two goals up. So um, five minutes for the end of the half. Mello this time running through really well. Straight to Saka, who has a finesse chance. It's just over the bar. Really should be doing a little bit better, but he was unfortunate to not get away with it. And just before the end of half time, this is like real life, this game. It's actually a simulation. It's not even a simulation, it's just real life. Real life is a simulation. Ben Chilwell's down injured. Who would have guessed Ben Chilwell getting down injured with like a calf or knee injury? It's not funny because I like Ben Chilwell as a good player, but he's so injury prone on FIFA and in real life. And we are indeed 2 up at half time. So uh, three minutes after the restart, we give away the ball with Mella high up in the pitch. Havertz finds a ridiculous pass to Kante. Ramos intercepts it, doesn't get any luck. And it eventually goes to Pulisic and then to Hudson Adoy, who slots it past Ramsdale. And we were so unlucky with that because Ramos, sorry, yeah, Ramos inter intercepted the ball here. We got really lucky from uh, a break to Lukaku. It's just an easy ball and an easy finish. Ramsdale's never going to save that, is he? And it is indeed 2 1. And we're under the cosh a little bit because this Chelsea team are difficult to play against. And straight from kickoff, I give away the ball with the groups. That's a good start to kickoff, isn't it? And Saar, the youngster from uh, Nice, picks up the ball. Pulisic picks up the uh, ball on the left. It's an easy little pass, an intricate play. You play like balls over the top, it's like ultimate team, this. Lukaku has the ball, straight back to Pulisic, straight back to Kante. And the football is fantastic from the AI. And it's 2-2, I don't know what to say. It's just infuriating playing against players like this, who can ping the ball around better than I can. And, um, I mean, that they threw again, Pulisic this time plays a great through ball to Lukaku, and Ramsdale this time comes up with a phenomenal save. It, you might say it was at him, but he still spread himself and made a very, very quality save so um, towards the end of the attack though 67 minutes now Saka pulls it back to Zambo and Gisa, straight into Mela who's looking for Mitrovic pulls it back to Saka again it's such a long winded attack this I should have clipped it a bit better but De Groot this time gets challenged at the last minute but Mitrovic turns what a save by Mendy oh my days that's a ridiculous save I don't honestly don't know how he saved that then right before the end of the game Pulisic pulls the ball back to Jorginho Blocked by, straight to Kante, back to Jorginho, shoots, it's a good save by Ramsdale, who keeps us in the game with a fantastic save right at the end of the, for, uh, the second half, sorry. 
and from the resulting corner we cross the ball Mitrovic wins it any day of the week against any player and we do scrape a 2-2 draw so um, very disappointing result to be honest very very disappointing we see Kosevsky and Mendy and Pulisic and Kante walking off I think they were lucky I think that I know we say we scraped it we, just, we saved a couple of shots with the goalkeeper at the end but I think they were lucky. You might say expected the goals they dominated, but I think they were very lucky with the chances they got for the ricochets and dodgy bounces they got. So, um, match ratings weren't bad. Saka was the best player for us, but he was average. He was very, very average. So, um, we do go straight into the press conference, though. We haven't got a press conference for the Chelsea game, mind you. We've got one for the Napoli game coming up. It's a pre-match press conference in the Champions League, so we do love them and they look fantastic. So... Sorry it takes so long. I was actually reading the questions and it just doesn't answer anything right. Say so like, oh, which which one is it? Which one can get me the most team morale or a ha very happy team spirit? None of them. Because they're, they're broken. It doesn't even matter how much you read them. I was proper debating this one. I was like, oh, which one is it? Is it about confidence? Is it about the boys are working hard? It's all about confidence, apparently. So, um, they're broken. They're broken. Don't do them. Skip them. You don't need them. But we do indeed go into the... Um, Final game of the episode of Champions League game. We see the pre-match players walking out. These have got a right team, by the way. It's a really, really strong team. But uh, obviously our team's better, but they've still got a really good team. Then you see the Policia outside the vans. I'd be scared of the Italian police, to be honest. They are scary, scary mofos. So um, we have got Napoli at their stadium. I don't think it's called the Stadion Olympic, but apparently it is on this. I don't think they've got a racetrack, as far as I can remember. But it's FIFA. It's FIFA, who cares? So uh, we do start their team. Got Martinez in goal from Aston Villa. That's where he went. They've got, um, I don't know what that right back's name is, Botman, Elvedi, Gaia, Cruz, Dem, Trincao, Mount, Ozzyman, and Insigne. It's Gorozabel, apparently. It's a very good team, to be honest. We've got about six players there who have, well, probably about three or four players have won the Champions League. So very, very good team. An internationally winning team as well with the Copa America and the Euros and the World Cup. They've won everything between them. African Cup of Nations, you name it. But our team is better. I don't care what anyone says. Our team's the best team in the world. We're going to win the Premier League. We're going to win the Champions League. We're going to win the FA Cup. Maybe not the League Cup. We see our team, though. We've got Ramsdale in goal. We've got Lamptey as the right back, which is a nice change because Hatterbo gets a lot of games. We've got Tamori, Gavardo and Robertson as the rest of the back four. We've got Bellingham and Phillips as the holding midfielders. And then Carvalho, Mellet, Carrillo and Mitrovic as the front four. So, um, very strong team nonetheless. Napoli are to kick off with Ozyman, the number nine, the super eagle striker, the Nigerian nightmare, I nearly called him then, but that's Sadiq, he's the better Nigerian. And um, Napoli do get us underway at the Stadion Olympique. So um, to start off with, Robertson makes a really good interception. Phillips picks it up straight to Mitrovic, a through ball, a really poor slide by Ovedi. Carrillo holds off Gorozabal, and we're one nil up inside the first three minutes. How insane is that? He does the Jesus celebration because we really don't like Jesus. I'm not even joking. We really don't like him. What a finish that was by um, Carrillo. A great through ball by Mitrovic. And he puts us 1-0 up. A good bit of football that, weren't it, to be fair? A good turn by Carrillo. It's a great finish against the uh, experienced stopper, Emiliano Martinez. So, um, even not long after that, Carrillo this time sets up Mitrovic. 2-0 up in eight minutes. This is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic football so far. We've got the Italian job. That's what I'm going to call it. That's a great, great episode title name, that. The Italian job. 2 0 up against Napoli already. And we are cruising. Then 18 minutes now. Carrillo makes another fantastic through ball to Car uh, Carvalho, sorry, who holds off Gaia. He should really score. And then the rebounds and ricochets. We get really unlucky not to get anything back from him. And Napoli do eventually get away with it. So uh, this time, Tomori wins the ball back. Bellingham with a very wayward pass. Dem to Cruz. That's really, really poor from me. And Bellingham especially. Because they just press. They don't have to do with a press. It's so difficult to play against. And Tony Cruz celebrates as Napoli go 2-1. Then 10 minutes before the end of the half, Mitrovic plays another through ball to Carrillo. It's a good save by Emiliano Martins. I should have really scored, but I went to low driven shot it for some reason. And um, sort of wasted the chance. But we are still two and up at half time. A very good half. And um, we're just a bit unlucky, to be honest. That's usually how the story goes. But straight after kickoff, Mella gets past Garaza, but like he's not even there. Mella sort of dropped off a little bit, but he's still fantastic. Mitrovic plays the through ball back to Mella, who crossed the ball to Korea. It's a really good save by Martinez. 
The ball somehow goes around the post. I don't know how, but it's phenomenal goalkeeping by Emiliano Martinez and a very good cross by Mellor and a very, very good header by Carrillo. So uh, very unfortunate not to score. Well, I mean, we're against probably best goalkeeper in Premier League there, shot stopping wise. Resulting corner though, Mitrovic does get a header and Martinez easily gathers low to his left. So um, Napoli do get a substitution next after their free kick they've got. Matt, they did win a free kick for a dodgy challenge by Tamori. Mount hits it. Off the crossbar, straight back to Trincao. And it's 2-2. I mean, they've just bought on Jamal Musiala. Like, what is their team? How have they got this much money? Like, we just want to beat Napoli because we don't like a lot of the fan base. It's just ridiculous. Like, I mean, a lot of the fans are nice, but the ultras are scary. The ultras aren't nice people. But we're just so unlucky with some of the things we concede. It's just ridiculous. Free kick straight back to the player. Only player alive. But you know it is what it is. As Mello weaves his way through, it's a really, really good save by Martinez. I knew he weren't going to score then, so I just carried on chatting shit. But Mello does have a really good effort denied by Martinez. Resulting cross, he's won and cleared away by uh, Dem for Napoli. Mello picks up the ball again, plays it into Gavardia, straight to Bellingham. Look for Zambanguita with another effort. It's another good save by Emiliano Martinez, who's really keeping Napoli in the game at the moment. Save after save after save. Then the resulting corner, we cross the ball with Mella, straight towards Martinez, and Mitrovic just ploughs into him. And it is a foul, and they do get away with a free kick. So um, Saka this time crosses the ball into Mitrovic, who takes a really, really good torch. It's just such a good goal by Mitrovic. He honestly scores the hardest goals you'll ever see. Like I've never seen a player just run through a scoreboard like that either. That is that is breathtakingly exceptional. Just such a good little ball by Saka and a really, really good touch by uh, Mitrovic first time. Then to volley it over the goalkeeper, crossbar in here. That is phenomenal from Mitrovic. But uh, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Ten minutes before the end of the game. Napoli somehow in the ball back to Trincao. Plays it to Ozyman. He plays it back to uh, Trincao to Ozyman. And it's a really good ball. And Elif Elmaz. It's just, just ridiculous goals, aren't they? Like, such ridiculous goals. And... To be fair, it might have been Musiala. I, I don't think he's got a real game face, so it might have been Musiala. It's a really good finish, and it's just it's just disappointing. We win the ball back right before the end of the game. We get another chance. Zaman Gisa straight to Mitrovic. Bellingham wins the ball, playing it back to Mitrovic. Mello crosses the ball in, looking for Saka on the back stick, and what a header that is. Oh, my days. Look at that finish by Saka. What a header. Like, just, just that's a fantastic little team goal right at the end of the game. The composure from not just the team, but from me as well, because we have to sing my praises sometime on the channel as well. What a bit of football that was. That was breathtaking to watch. Just cross the ball in after playing it round about 12 times. It's a great ball by Mella. Saka, one of the smallest people in the box. No one's even marking him. Under Martinez, and we do get the Italian job done. We finally get it done. Such a difficult game this was, honestly. It's his second Champions League goal of the season, but... These were ridiculous to play against. I'm sorry, but they were ridiculous to play against. They scored every shot they had. And um, I'm telling the manager that he's a prick in his ear, because he is. But we're so, we're so unlucky to be actually conceding in first place there. So, um, yeah, we, we had a really good result there, I'm not going to lie. 4-3 it, it, away at Napoli is a really difficult game. But um, we do go straight to the press conference and it was a fantastic performance. The headlines today will be Mitrovic because they always are. There's no other way around it. They're always about Mitrovic because he's the best player in the league. And um, fantastic result. I, I, even, I can't even say anything else about a fantastic result. We're just really, really good that game. Really poor defensively. Really good attackingly. We won the game 4-3. We've got the away goal. If, it, if it's even a thing anymore, I don't even know. But it's irrelevant anyway because we're at the end of the episode. So uh, we see the table at the end of the episode. We are second in the league now. We have been for a while, to be fair. We've not got any sort of blanket in front of us, uh, below us between fifth and second. So we can always drop out of the top four. We've, we've sort of claimed it, I think. City are nine points clear. They're already clear. But Mitrovic is indeed the top scorer, so who cares? He's got 40 goals. He's got twice as many as Nunez at Wolves. who's having an exceptional season himself. But De Groot's also got 20 assists because he plays with Mitrovic. Mellor's got 14 because he plays with Mitrovic. And Mitrovic has got nine because he plays with Mitrovic. So um, we're doing really well in clean sheets and goals. It's ridiculous. And then Ramsdale obviously has got six clean sheets already, which is, again, absolutely fantastic. So um, just have a quick look at how many goals we've scored this season. 
90 goals. We have absolutely plastered the opposition, absolutely plastered him. And Liverpool, Southampton and Everton are like... Just, Southampton having a bad season, but Liverpool and Everton are really poor this season, really poor. It is what it is. So we've got the next episode. We've got an away game at St. James's Park. And then we've got an away game in the Cup against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Another away game, apparently, against Crystal Palace at Sellers Park. And then a home game against Napoli and a home game against Brighton. So I really do appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.